And welcome, welcome, welcome to Amber Skies. My name's Blades, and today it's the Programming Club. It's actually episode two. Wow. We move on. What will we be doing today? Uh, I think we'd better finish off this input. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been searching around doing different things this week. Uh, let's start up a machine. Let's see what we get. Um, I'm going to be using uh, Manjaro um, Linux, Arch Linux, I suppose. Um, it's a little bit of a better programming system. Why is that? <laughs> uh, because Visual Studio keeps crashing on me and doing stupid things. As soon as I get to a large program size, Visual Studio just doesn't cope very well. I am still going to be using code. <coughs> um, because it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and hopefully it's not going to mess me up. So. Well, let's just get rid of that. I actually have a background noise here. Hmm, how interesting. A background noise has appeared in my left ear. Well, there you go. My left ear is in for a treat today. I don't know what it's going to be in for a treat for, but hey-ho, we'll find out. So, for Manjaro, this is the Arch Linux Manjaro Architect Edition with the choice of KDE as my desktop. How are we doing? We're looking okay. Yeah, we were in C++, weren't we? I hope so, because I'm gaining folders galore down here. Let's have a quick look, see where we're up to. Ah, oh, right, that was it. I'm using CGFX5. I had to use a backup, um, mainly because I had to change quite a lot of stuff in here. Um, Git has been sorted out. We've got VS Code sorted out. Yay! Which means we can now take the hidden files off. And really, in here, I'm just going to type in code dot. There we go. And that gives us VS Code for this system. Nice. We do have our lovely, 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 lovely shell type console thingy. That's good. That's good. And source main. I've made an alteration, have I? Yes, I've left myself a couple of alteration notes. Just green blocks. Nothing much. Input. Yeah, I haven't talked about input. This file is interesting. Um, it's a leftover. What it is, is it's all the key file, um, key codes for SDL. Hmm. Oh, got internationals. Okay. Uh, that's function keys. Yeah, that's good. Got all the function keys. We've got all the function keys again. Hmm. Right, everything's in here. Oh, yeah, the alphabet. Mm hmm. And it's called class. Eesh. Right, okay. We're going to have to change that. That's no good to us. Hmm. I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. No problem. Right, so what we got so far here? We have... Uh, source. Hmm. Main. Tests, 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 tests. I'm just wondering. Mm. 
Should I add core or should I add just with main? I'm guessing this is going to be core. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm not overly sure. So what we're going to do is we'll pop in source for now. New file. What shall we have? Um, well, we need to do the front end because we've done the back end. We did that on Wednesday, the last epi well, the first episode, the last episode. Um, so today I'm looking at um, probably getting this input management system sorted out and doing the front end. So for a front end, we're going to need a control. We know we need some kind of control. So let's have input um, control. Yeah, control dot h a p p for header file plus plus. We'll have that. It's not really going to hold them much, is it? Hmm. Not really. Alrighty. Let's start a file up. Uh, today's date is 27th. Okay. I guess we're going to be doing the old hag prashma once, pragma once. IntelliSense is a bit lacking. I think I know why. Uh, I've been adding silly things in here, haven't I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Assembly code, yeah. Um, don't even look at that. Um, you can't see that. No, no don't look. <laughs> um, now, let's have a look. We're going to need a class. So let's have a class. It's not going to do much again, this one. I don't think, anyway. Well, I hope it isn't. Uh, input control. Yeah, that'll do. I like this new highlighting system. That's nice. Um, the only thing I really want this to control is an amount. Okay. So we'll have an amount. Hmm. How is this going to fit in, Blades? Well, this is going to take um, or keep control over whatever input is entered. It's going to split off um, and make sure that the objects that we are controlling and the inputs that we are using uh, are kept separate. So the object that we control has no idea about any of the inputs and doesn't care. So we're slicing it down once more. Oh, and this is the front end, not the back end now. So let's go public here. Okay, it's now realized that we're actually in the right thing. So that's good news because it's now going to do stuff. Yeah, I'm going to use a semicolon. Don't really need to. It's not going to do anything, is it? Ah, right, yeah. Um, so we want to be able to add amount. So yeah, this is literally how it's going to look, folks. So amount to add. That'll do. Um, and I think we'll have another one which is just going to be get amount. So it's not really going to be doing much this input controller, is it? Um, so get amount. And that's that. I'm going to separate them out. Do I need to? Not really. But better put a semicolon on that. 
All right, um, that's it. That's your input control. Uh, it just controls an amount of input. So we can add to the amount and use that amount to uh, govern our input. So let's make it in line because there's nothing going on in here at all. Um, so it's input control colon colon uh, input control. Let's do this part which is the constructor and that's just going to have um, amount and we'll just stick it to 0 0.0 f and I think I can dent that if I really really wanted to um, I'm going to leave it empty aren't I So I'll leave a note to myself that I meant to do it. That always helps. Um, inline. Um, void. And it's input control. How interesting. It seems to have lost the fact that we have input control. <laughs> Uh, this one is add amount, isn't it? So let's just float amount to add. Um, think, yeah, that's okay. Absolutely okay. Uh, yeah, amount. plus equals amount to add. Wow. This is really complex stuff, isn't it? Let's be honest. <coughs> so the last one we need to do is the more slightly complex one, and that's going to be a float uh, input control. And this one is now get amount. And this is the only one that isn't straightforward. <laughs> Interestingly enough. Um, getters and setters. Oh my god. I'm doing a getter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because it has to be done in a different way. Um, we do have a maths library and we haven't added it. Mm. Do I need to? I would think so. Okay. I need math colon colon. I have it. Okay, clamp. Interesting. So we'll clamp the amount uh, between minus one point zero F and one point zero F. There we go. Now that worries me. I've got math colon colon. Hmm, that means I've got a global that's fine. Okay. I think that's it. I don't really want to do anything more with that. Except where do I... Sorry. It's just where I decide to put it at the end of the day, I think, with that one. And it's telling me I've got an error. It says it's here. It's there. Must be a class or namespace name. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right. It's a tight death. Will that work? Hmm. Should do. Okay, let's just try building that. Yeah, I don't see a problem in it. How interesting. He's telling me there's an error. And yes, it'll build it. Alright. Well, of course it will. It's a HTTP file. I'm an idiot. Doesn't compile those. Hmm. I'm not overly happy with that. For obvious reasons. So it's platform dependent. Where am I getting clamped from? Um. That's a wrapper. Hash include. Hmm. I'll try including it. Ah, yes, that'll, that'll solve my problem. Right, that'll do it. I just don't want it to chuck out an error as soon as we use this code. This code doesn't get compiled. It runs in line. So until it's used, it won't throw out an er error. So that's the reason why I can compile it, and I didn't get an error. Because it doesn't actually compile. The inlines do. It's a weird way of doing things in... C++, which can really, really mess you up if you're not careful about it and you don't accept what you're being told sometimes. You've got to be careful. Um, we've got an input control now, haven't we? So we can now do the game event handler. Okay. So under source, we now have an input controller. Let's add a new file. And we will call it game. These might all get thrown somewhere else. Yeah, event handler. Remember we did a, a temporary one. Well, this is its replacement, I guess. So game event handler. I've spelt it right, I hope. Here we go. So we'll have one of those. And it's a hash prag once. And we put the right date on it. Alrighty. Let's think this through a bit more this time, I think. Uh, <laughs> might help if I read my notes. Uh, what are we doing now? My notes say do the input control first. Blah de blah de blah. And then do the game event handler. Here we go. Alright, let's try doing this properly. Uh, my notes are telling me now to include stuff which might help. Alright, so what are we going to include? We are going to include a core. And that's the i application thingy. Yeah, 
what we started with really I think we're going to need that um, we are definitely going to need without any exception data structures um, which ones are we going to need uh, map CPP that's just a wrapper for the standard library std colon colon map because uh, we're going to be using that and I'm also going to use another wrapper for the arrays yeah we have it there good we've done those that's good news I'm glad those have been done because I don't I mean if you're using the standard library all I'm doing is using std colon colon map and I think you might know what an array is so we should be alright with that and I need that input control don't I because we've just written it <laughs> input control we have an unwell cat unfortunately that's never good so let's name our class it's going to be a game event handler and we are going to inherit from if you remember how these things went in our temporary one so it's public and it's i app event handler there we go it's popped in there for me thank god let's have a semicolon at the end um i'm going to use this std map and we are going to create the most stupid thing I have ever thought up. <laughs> but there's very good reasons for it. So actually, I don't use a space. So it's angle bracket. And we're going to use the uint32 um, for the first, for the key. That's the key for the map. And for the second part of the map, uh, the value, we are going to use an array. Hmm. And it's going to be an array of, oh my god, here we go, std, colon, colon, pair, of pairs. Gulp. Uh, in the pair, we are going to use a float. And that's probably going to be the value or weight and the input controller or input control. And I'll just need the address for that. So we should have three closes now. One, two, three. Yeah, we'll just call that inputs. Three angle brackets to close it. Wow. That's an insane variable. An absolutely insane variable, but it's going to make everything so much more um, manageable, shall I say. Uh, so yeah, we'll take that. Uh, do we need anything else? No. I think insanity will rule for this one. You'll never see variables like that lying around normally. So let's have our game event handler. It's not going to do anything. Right, okay, I've already decided that. I'll have a virtual um, destructor for game event handler. And, whoa, that's not going to do anything either. Uh, we haven't got any pointers in there, have we? We've just got an address. That's fine. Now, this stuff here is coming from iApplication Event Handler. And we popped you in core. That's this file here. So I'll need you lot. I'll take the private as well. So we've got everything out of there. That's what we started with. Uh, space P. There we go. And just correct the spacing on that last one. Uh, 
Okay. Now we might have to uh, modify this somehow. Yeah, that might help. So copy, paste. Lovely. That'll work now. And I will need to add an extra. So what we're going to have. Oh, I see. This has come out slightly. Um, I'm going to add an extra. We'll just add uh, an update. I'm going to keep that private. I don't want other things updating this file. So it's game event handler. No, it's not. Uh, uint32 comma input code yeah well I'll do that um, float uh, I'm gonna call it direction uh, because it works better for me and a bool is repeat I'm calling it direction because if you press the A key you want to go left, if you press the D key you want to go right. So one's plus, that'll be D, and A will be minus one. So the float will go from minus one to one. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yes, we've already accounted for that, I believe, in the, in the first file that we've done. Input code isn't happy because I've added a comma where I shouldn't. Which is typical of me, thank you. Right, we've got all these lovely files. What do you want to do with this? Um, I think we better do uh, a CPP file for this. Yeah, I think we will. Hmm, close core off. New file. Game event handler. I've got a lot of typing to do today. That's why I'm not really messing about or anything else like that. I'm just going to get on with it. Um, there's a lot of, well, there's a couple of files I really want to add at this point. So there is not a V anymore. So I'll take the header. To make sure that people know that I'm adding this thing. Hash include <coughs> game event handle dot HPP and Q. And now we have the fun part. Yeah. So all we're going to do here. I've already done the constructor and destructor, but I'm not going to bother with those. All I'm going to do is bother with these. That's all I'm going to do. Um, so these will all have to come out. That might help if I take them off. These are no longer going to be pure virtual. So there we go, that's that done. So come on, lovely. Everything's looking a bit better. Yeah, that'll work now. I could just copy and paste, can I? Um, yeah, I suppose so. No, I'll do them one by one. So if we can get rid of that and we can split the screen okay. and we can do that and we can get a little bit more space I think there yeah I think I think we're looking all right with that so let's see what we got first of all we have 
on key down, so it's void. And it's game, event, handler. And let's see, on key down is the first one, is it? Yeah. I think we're going to run into problems pretty quickly here. Do I need... Mm, no, I don't. It's okay. Just trying to think ahead slightly on what we're going to need. So it's just uh, uint32 key code and a bool. So uint32 uh, Don't be silly. 32 key code and the bool for is repeat. Excellent. Now, what we're going to put in here, as he looks for his coffee and realises he's got no drinks here. So, in here, we are going to update input. That's what I called it, I hope. Yes, I did. That's good news. Bring that up slightly. Okay, Muppet. Alright, that's me cats going off to find food. Um, we're going to in update it with key code, uh, comma, and we now need float direction. So that's why I call it a direction. Um, so on key down, we tell it that the key has gone down. So that's a 1.0f. And is repeat. There you go. And that's it. That was nice and easy. Yeah, copy and paste, I know. And this is on key up. And guess what the change is? That. Lovely. That didn't go too badly, did it? <laughs> so, on the first one, we're telling it um, to press the button down and to not press the button down. So, those are the two values that we are going to use for pressing down keys and not pressing down keys, it looks like. Yeah, and that'll be it. Um, I've got a problem here, haven't I? Because I need a mouse offset now. Hmm. Alright, let's have a mouse offset. Um, I'm just going to define one. I don't know how many keys at this stage I've got, so... Uh, mouse. Offset. Um, stick a number in. 1024. Nope. Okay, try that again. 1024. There you go. Right, we now have a mouse offset. I can work with that. So, copy. Paste. And it's not on key up, it's on mouse. No, it's on mouse down. And this is a mouse button. Let's just read it, see what it says. This is a mouse down, so it's mouse button, uint8, num clicks. That's mouse button. Uh, uint eight and num clicks. There we go. That's okay now. So we are going to update our input with a mouse button. 
not a key code. Uh, direction, we'll go back to the positive, is repeat, mm, not really bothered. We don't care if it's repeating or not, so we don't care. There we go, that's how we say we don't care. And will that work? Yep, push down a mouse button, we'll update the input to 1. How about that? No, it won't work. It's not that at all, it's mouse offset. And we have to add that to there. So mouse offset plus mouse button. That's why I wanted the offset because it has to come after the keys because we're going to be storing all the keys that we're using uh, so we can look at them. And that's what this is all about. So it's um, ironic because the less keys you use in your, your program, the faster this gets. The more keys you use in your program, uh, the slower this gets. So it's actually quite useful in the fact that it will only keep track of keys that we're using. And that's going to be an interesting side effect, uh, which means, yeah, it will work quite well. It's efficient. That's the word I'm looking for. Efficiency. An efficient keyboard reader. Or oh, this is actually a key logging system, really. Let's be honest with it. So that's a game. Event handler. Um, so now we're on, on mouse down, I think. No, we're on mouse up. And it's just the same as it was here. So that's the same. Yep, that's okay. Yeah, we're looking good with this now. Why is on mouse off arguing with me? I don't know. Thank you. When we release it, we'll tell you. By minus one, they're releasing it. Okay. Alright, what are we up to next? Uh, we've got the assigns, which uh, copy and assign as automatic. Uh, so all we need is the last part, isn't it? So this is private. Hmm. No. We've got on mouse move, haven't we? Ah. Deary me. Um. Okay. Um. This is on mouse move if there's any questions about what I'm doing here don't worry just ask away in chat I don't mind or if you want to see me do something completely different and help you out with anything else that you want to do hmm, fine just ask uh, on mouse move we've got all of this lot in here so let's copy you lot out there we go Finally got to the right place. Uh, there we go. I'll just put it as Blake, no Fraser. That's my programming thing. Okay. I'm not going to do on mouse move right now. 
Um, that could be a bit iffy and a bit tricky. I don't, I don't exactly know how I'm going to work that bit yet, so don't worry. Um, and this one's a straightforward one. So I can just copy that one. Private, in my usual style. Uh, take that off, put that on, and game event handler. Go on, go on. There we go. This isn't looking too bad. Oh, stretch me back. Right, the update input. Hmm. How are we going to do that? Uh, did I add mouse offset on that last one? Yes, I did. Mouse button, mouse button, mouse button. Yeah, uh, everything's correct. And uh, let's have a look what we can do here. So, let's see if we can get this screen to go up a bit. Yes, we can. Good. Um, if is repeat and we're not interested to quite honestly return just, uh, we're not going there we're just going to ignore the input completely so for uh, uint this is where it becomes fun index equals zero index is less than uh, the inputs. Uh, which one do we need? Input code. So whichever input code we or whichever key we have pressed, um, we'll take the size of those inputs as well. Uh, so that gives me the full size of every of the input, how many inputs, codes, and stuff that there can be, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's getting to that stage where it becomes hard to explain what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. How am I going to break this up? We are going to take the inputs for the input code. And we are going to take the i or indexed indexed one. So I can put index in there. Lovely. And we need the second part of that. This is the map, remember. So map has first and second. The first part of the map is the input code, and the second part of the map is a pair. So we are going to add a mount, because we can now. And I'm going to hit return here. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, so, what amount are we going to add? We are going to add the amount that is going to be stored in there. Right, okay. So, inputs. Uh, input code. And it's going to be the indexed. So I'll have to use the index again. This time we want to get to the first again. First of the pair for the value. 
and we're going to have to times that by direction, aren't we? For the minus of all the plus one. So times direction. I'm going to stop at that point. Does that make any sense? No. I oh, hope he doesn't anyway. If it did make sense to you, please hold your hand up in chat. Ah, <laughs> oh, bless. This is a fantastic system. And it works. It's just that complicated, idiotic bit here. What this does is it puts uh, an add amount into our storage uh, here. There. Yeah. So it's that float that we are messing with. Um, so it's that float that we are altering using this piece of code here, which is why it's index.first here times direction. Um, otherwise, it's fine. All we need is an input controller. And yeah, we're fine. We'll see how that translate now shall we I think we shall have I finished with this yeah yeah we now need to try and use all of this that's going to be fun there are a couple of things that we can do to improve it uh, mouse offset let's go back and do that input file so we can get a mouse offset we can put it in core, can't we? Hmm. Let's find out in a minute too. Let's get rid of all this lot first. Are you okay in here? Making sure all my semicolons are right. Yeah, you look okay there. Everything looks okay. Map array input control. Yeah, everything's good there. All right. Oh, let's go on with this now. <laughs> Temporary event handler. Da 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 da. Puppy power. Selection. No edit. Yes. Do. Thank you. This we don't need anymore. Um, hmm. Yeah, so these are going to be deleted, aren't they? Just delete it all together. Don't really need it. Uh, what do we need? We do need hash include I've got a cat sitting on my arm again <laughs> uh, game event handler we'll have that one and we'll also hash include our new other file which is input There it is. Control handler. Or input control, should I say. So these are the two whoops, files that we've just written. That's my microphone. Ouch. That doesn't help. Uh, so all we're doing now is we are going to get rid of this temporary event handler. We are now going to use the game event handler instead. So it's pretty obvious how we're going to do that. We're going to come down to wherever it is down here there it is so it's no longer that one so we can use game here that now exists so that's good that's a good change to have um, we need to remove that example now which is highlighting in red for me which is good um, get rid of these two lines here well, no, get rid of that line. 
and that line. I'm going to leave the code. There we go. That's all back in line. Lovely. So that's got rid of temporary event handler and reset. Uh, the rotation code, is it? I think it is. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, transform set rotation. So that's that thing that does the rotation. And all we'll be doing was stopping it with the keyboard so for the rotation and just making sure that the uh, event system was holding up to what we expected it to do. Now, hmm, let's go back. We can start introducing things here. We can introduce um, a new input control. So I'll have a new input control and I'm going to call this one horizontal. Mm, this sounds fair enough. Uh, input control, I'll call this one vertical. Cause that's all I'm going to do at the moment. Uh, right, to do the next line, what do we need? We are going to need uh, that input file. Right, we're going to need the key codes. So all the key codes I've already shown you, they're in I input in input. So let's go and rename that class and get it all sorted out, shall we? Uh, first thing to do, I think, is to rename this. That's not the name I want. Just call it input. Alright, so that's that done. Hopefully that should give us some red markers. There you go. Do I need all of this now? Hmm. Let's think about it. This is all virtual stuff for updating. Well, we're doing this somewhere else now, aren't we? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'll get everything. Get rid of. I don't think I need that either, do I? I'll leave it in case other things are needed. Alright, I'm happy with that. Um, let's just make sure it's not messing itself up anywhere else here. Uh, num mouse buttons, num keys. Oh, that's going to be interesting. I think we can use that. Um, where did we put that one? There. We can have that in there now. Um, where am I going to put this include? Hmm. Right, okay. Mouse offset will change automatically, so let's go back to here. Right, I don't want this input in here. I'll move it to core. Yeah, move that. Uh, that means I can now delete you. Uh, yeah, move to trash. There's nothing in it. So that's that fine. So that's cool there. And that's cool. And now it's just input.h. 
Lovely. That now means that this works. Hopefully. Huh? Alright, do we need to put anything else in here? put it in here. I'm not sure I really want it in here though. Will it make these work? Those are enums. num underscore keys all right num underscore it's not coming up is this just another one of these cases where intellisense is having a field day somewhere No, it isn't, because I'm an idiot. It's in input, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That'll work. I don't like that there, though. So it should work here. Good, we're okay. Right, it's just I don't want to put a HPP file, an extra HPP file in here. I would prefer it in the header files, please. That's what they are there for. So, back in main. This now means we can use it. Uh, so, back to the top. Alrighty, so hash include, and it's core, input.h, there we go, we can now use that, that's got all the key, key codes in it, um, so we have key codes, yay, what do we need next, oh, I've gone way past it, I? where was I up to? Main. Transform. Yeah, render device. Here we go. End of the scene creation. Look good. Oops, what do we want to put here? What, what else can we do here? <laughs> now we can add um, the actual event handler. So, event handler what can we now do with this we can now add key control hold on a minute have i missed something hmm Add key control. I have missed something somewhere. Yes, I have. It's game event handler. We haven't added a key control to it. Uh, 
and we're gonna have to. So, how's this gonna look? Um, let's just look at the header first. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it here. Um, we are going to have to add two more functions to this. So void, uh, add, I told you there's a lot more to this than uh, you might have originally thought. And why split it into two uh, sessions and not trying to do it all in one? So there's an add key control that we're going to have to put in here, which takes a uint32, and that's going to be a key code. Um, it's also going to have to take an input controller, input control, um, and that's going to be the address of some input control. Whichever one. Uh, and we're going to have a comma, aren't we? So let's come out of here. And float weight. This is where I fail to spell the word weight every time. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter what we set it to. It doesn't matter. It'll get changed. So let's do another one. Void uh, add mouse control. And that's going to be literally the same thing, isn't it? Well, I say literally. But it's not mouse code, is it? It's mouse button. Hmm, will that work? Yes, it will if combined with the update. Yes, this will work if we combine it. So let's have those two. Need a semicolon on that one. Let's add that into our CPP. here and bring you back in and let's set up these two little babies hmm we can have some fun doing these now oh god Oh god, let's see if I can remember how to do stuff. What did I say with my notes? I hope these are going to jog my memory anyway. Okay. Yeah, alright. Uh, hmm. Basically, they're both going to do the same thing. So this is how we get our key control into here. Um, so that we can do this line properly for the add amount and get the first, which is the float, yeah. So if we add it properly, we should be able to get that through here. It affects that line there. So how are we going to do it? Inputs. And in this case, it's key code. And it's going to be a straight push. Uh, underscore back. It's not going to give it me, is it? Uh, did I call it inputs? I'm sure I did. Yeah. Hmm. So why doesn't it like inputs? Don't know. Right, we're going to push back. 
let's have some fun uh, it's going to be a standard pair so we'll have to do the angle brackets I'm coming I'm splitting this down there's no way I'm going to get this on one line is there well I think not anyway uh, so it's a standard pair as we denoted in our header file and the standard pair is a float and it's an input control and we took the address didn't we so that's that that's the standard pair that we're going to push back so that's what we are going to use for weight w e i g h t yeah and input control so we're just going to push them straight back like that is that okay Should be. Inputs. What's wrong with you? Hmm. I am not quite understanding because I'm not using the M. Do I have to put this in front of it? I spelt it wrong about. Very funny. Hmm. Interesting. What's wrong with that? Identify in inputs is undefined. No, it's not. Game event handler. Three closes, and I put how many? How many opens and close? Oh, what have you just done there? All right. Um. Yeah. I've done something stupid, haven't I? I can always tell when I've done something stupid because it doesn't work properly. Uh, it's input code uh, okay I've done something stupid here add key control hmm What's there? I don't understand. <sighs> no idea. I'm going to ignore it for a second. <laughs> right, key code goes into there. Input control goes down there. Weight is the weight that we're adding to the float. Or setting the float to, should I say. Alright. I'm a little bit stuck on that one. If anybody can spot what cock up I've made that's fine there's no semicolon there have I defined it right in here 
semicolon there. This is annoying. Is this just an IntelliSense bug? Keep control of mouse control. There it is. Found it. It's me being stupid. All I had to do was go through the normal way of making one of these <sighs> properly. I hate making that mistake. But I did it again. Let's make this part of the game event handler. Yes, folks, that helps. So let's take that piece of code and copy it over, shall we? Now we know it works. Uh, inputs, we don't want key code, we want mouse button. I think that's the only change. Just get that out of the way. Uh, no, it's not. We have a mouse offset, don't we? Yes. So it's mouse offset. Plus. Mouse button. That's better. Then we can push it back. And then it's a standard pa pair. Float input control. Weight and input control. That looks good. So those are the to two um, functions methods, whatever you want to call them, that I'm just adding and getting it right in the end. How do you, uh, let me just check my notes again. That's looking okay. They're agreeing with me. Right, so we want to get back to this. Adding the key controls, don't we, here? Okay, so now I should be able to do dot, yes, event handler, add a key control, open it, and it should ask us for a key code, and I'm going to use input, uh, key, is it capitals isn't it, underscore A, uh, and I'm going to use the input control for horizontal. And we will set the weight on push down for the A key to minus one. Yeah. Excellent. And that's how we add a key. So we are going to use our new masterful event handler to do this. Um, copy it out a couple of times. All right, OK. Um, so we can do key A for left, that's left, minus one, I hope. Uh, key D, we can have. Uh, we'll go to the right on that one. Um, what else can we have? Uh, left, yep. That will be a minus one. The arrow keys, if you don't already un realize what these are for. Uh, and that can go to there. Uh, what can we have here? Uh, we'll take W in here. Uh, is that positive? Let's call it positive. Um, it's always difficult with these because it depends on how you look at the W and S. Uh, we'll have S as a minus for now. So up will be positive. And 
and down won't be. There we go. So that keeps those, see, that's how we can add keys quite easily. Um, we also need to, obviously now, uh, keep track of a couple of uh, items float. Uh, Expose, that might be nice. Let's have that equals 0 0.0f, comma, uh, float, y pos. I'm not doing the x, uh, sorry, the z, which is in and out of the screen. I'm just doing up, down, left, and right. Uh, y, don't do z. Just said I wasn't going to do it. Just for now, because I want to test this out first and make sure everything works. Uh, that's a semicolon. Right. How are we going to do this? So how are we going to use um, these input controls? We've got a horizontal one and we've got a vertical one. We've got all our event handlers now supported for those two controllers. So down here, begin scene update. I think that's a good place to start. Uh, all right. This needs all cleaning up after I've done this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in x pos. Uh, plus equals um, a made up number, 10 will do, constant times frame time. Because frame time is going to be pretty small, and so we don't want the mo movement to be completely, you know, dot by dot type of thing. We want to see it actually move. <laughs> so I'm timesing this by 10 to try and make sure we can see it move. Is that a standard number? Is it a, a standard constant? No, it's just something I just thought up on the spur of the moment. Horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I code. Uh, dot get amount. Semicolon. And we can obviously repeat this for the y position. Uh, our constant will keep the same. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Uh, now that we know that I've just completely made it up. Frame time times vertical. Now if you remember I said it's minus one to plus one on these get amounts. So it will be multiplying by minus one to plus one. What does that mean? It'll either go one way or the other, or it won't go either way. I think those are the only options we've left it. Uh, so now that we've done that, we've got to do this in the right order now. It's rotation, then you transform. You can't transform and then rotate. So, got to do these, these two instructions. That's got to come first. That's set rotation. That's as a given. But now we can put a new transform in. Uh, that's that one there, please. And now we want to set its translation. And that's using a vector. Which ones have we got? 3F. Good. I'm glad we got that one. Um, I'm going to do the vector X, pause, comma, Y, pause, comma, and uh, what have I used up here? Oh, it's zero, isn't it? It's a translation. Dum, 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 dum. Of course. Yep. And that's it. So in your actual program, what everything has boiled down to, all of these um, things that we've been doing. Have I got a mischief on this? Let me just check. I might have. 
I miss Chief. Yeah. Right, it's not that one. No, it's alright, I'll do a new one. Forget it. Uh, edit. Clear canvas. Okay. Come back to that in a minute then. <laughs> when I try to explain it all. Um, but let's just see if we can actually run it. Um... Well, can we build it? I think that's the uh, biggest thing. <laughs> Let's try a build. It should come up with errors somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Scanning dependencies of target. Game event handler CPP46. Default argument given for parameter. Oh, dumb. Stupid me. Uh, it's in the CPP file. Yes, it's quite right. I left in the arguments, which you don't do. They are in the HPP file only. You can only do it once. So uh, that's their default values. Could just put them to zero, can I? Hmm, don't mind. I don't think it really matters. All right, so that's that. Um, control B. Oh, looking better. Okay, it looks as though we may have a chance. We may have a chance here. So I've used WASD, haven't I? If this doesn't work, well, we're a bit stuck, aren't we? So, oh, W went to that. Alright, I've done the right left and right are working. W and S are not. And the escape key doesn't work. And that's too close. <laughs> so terminal. Yeah, this isn't I've fixed it, but uh never mind. Okay. Translate X and Y. So Y position for any time vertical. No, I haven't done, don't you? Yeah. Let's put these in. Uh, here. Set the distance here, and um, we'll go to 10, 10 meters away, so it's small, um, and we will try and build that, and pray, there we go, so W goes up, S goes down, left goes left, and right goes right, and that object there has no idea about the keyboard. None whatsoever. Those input controls, we can change to anything. Arrow keys, left, right, up, down, also work. As you can see, you can go, yeah. My delays on jumping around are due to it being in a virtual machine, not the program. Ah, that's, um, that's exactly how it's done, folks. Have we got any questions over here? Oh no. Um, am I transmitting today? Properly. I didn't even check. <laughs> I'm so used to things just going so smoothly, it's untrue. So we are live. Uh, we're doing alright. And no frames, frames dropped and we're at 60 frames per second. Good. So there we go. Um, 
that's a completely new way for you to do uh, keyboard or keyboard bindings. The keyboard bindings that you've seen me do before, uh, the other way of doing it, uh, isn't as good, shall we say. And, well, how can I put it? This is, I think, a better way of doing it, but at the same time involves a lot more abstraction. It also means that we have this lovely little bit here, which can be replaced now with um, reading an initialization file for your keys. So we can read an initialization file and use these values here, whatever they are. So that's key four. It'll tell me now what they are, 7, 80, 79. So it tells me what all the values are here uh, because they're all enumerations, which is great. Um, I think we've done well to get that into the program and working successfully. Now, why have I gone to all of this trouble? Let's have a look at what we've actually done, I think. And I think we need to look at this carefully. Let's have a look. So what we have now done is we started off with core. And we had added iApplication event handler, which is just an event handler. It doesn't do anything. So let's put this down on mischief as our first thing. Okay. Oh god, all my things are all over the place. One second. I'll get rid of you all together, I think. Uh, I'm not sure why these keep going over to that side, but I don't really care, so I click over on it. Yeah, okay. Right. <coughs> Let's start dissecting what we've done. Okay, so we have I application event handler. Okay, it doesn't matter the file type. Uh, we also changed uh, one of our platform areas, and it was the SDL part. So we actually started all of this through the SDL here at SDL application, which is a standard application set up for SDL. Um, if you've ever done SDL, you know exactly what this is. Um, this is a create an application, blah 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 blah, and do the instances, um, singleton, <laughs> great. Um, event handler, yep, that's what we put in. So what we did is we have used this to pull the operating system events. So let's add that to our list here. Wish that didn't happen. So, what we got, we have SDL and it's SDL2. Um, this is an application. Creator and we've used this uh, to poll. So this polls the operating system events, which include keyboard, mouse, and a lot of other things. Uh, the iApplication event handler is abstract. 
that's just an abstract class. Um, or template, if you want to call it that. So that's just an abstract class that gives us how we want to use this. This defines how... So it defines how to interpret the polled event. Now I'm going to have to pull everything over because I can't put it on because I'm an idiot. Data. Or value. Values. Whatever you want to call it. I call it data. Values. Doesn't matter. Put it in English. Alright. So that's the I application event handler. What else have we changed in here? Uh, we then did a temporary event handler, didn't we? Which comes from the I application. So I application has to go somewhere else. And we have now placed it somewhere else. We have now placed it not in platform. Uh, it's here. Input control is fine. Event handler. So HPP. There we go. It'll be here. So this I application event handler is inherited into game event handler. So let's add that to here. I just realized you can't see everything I'm writing. Uh, so let's pop this over. So it's game event handler. Okay, that's what we're doing now. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to use a pad at the same time. So this is the next line down. So this goes to here. Uh, this is now inherited into the game event handler. I think I've missed something out already. Probably. Okay, and the game event handler decides on the actions that we are going to take with the data or how we are going to store that data. And we store it in this awful, awful, awful variable called uh, inputs. So all of that data that comes through those polled events gets stored into here as a float using the input control. And the input control is tied in now. So this ties in your input control. And that is being used to control the weights. So as the information is coming in, so as the data actually comes in, we use uses our input control and the input control all that does <coughs> is literally can everything here is control the weights uh, controlled weighting is it weights? No, the game event handler does that. Yeah. Yeah, that controls weighting. 
so this part here all right storage and weights the input if you're not clear about what weighting means what it means is I could have um, instead of a digital input an analog input like a joystick and you want to know how far the joystick has been pressed to the left well you'll go from naught to one um, from zero to 100 percent basically as a float and this game handler can store that because we can weight things and we can have an input uh, scale and that's what we need that for and that's why it's been written that way is so that the game event handler can actually handle analog joysticks and analog input from game pads um, which is very important um, especially if you want to use flight control sticks for uh, aircraft or whatever simulators it becomes very important for testing out at the moment we're just going to be going baby steps as usual and uh, we're not going to I'll put that as analog storage. So you can thought you see how beautiful this is, is that it can do digital and uh, so we can do digital storage and uh, analog storage so digital there we go digital and analog storage the input control is how we want to actually control the input or what input matters <coughs> so input control brings us out to the front end this is now the front end um, we have to go to main for that I hope I haven't uh, forgotten anything I'm trying to think if I have I'll go back over my notes in a second it's just I can't access them right now so yeah our input uh, we can define to control the action or the response so the input control is your response and uh, access okay so that's response access and uh, input definition I'm not sure how many I'm supposed to have in that but anyway that's the full system <coughs> what it means is the response and access and input definition are all as one and we don't care how it gets there it can come from SDL2 it can come from GLFW I think there may be one in SFML as long as you know um, what the input definitions are then you are fine let's get this on screen now properly and let you have a look at that I'll just check my notes now make sure I haven't missed anything I'll check off across so I application yeah that's okay SDL application we've looked at 
the temporary event handler was just something we used. Um, um, processing the messages, yeah. Then we added the input controller. Uh, the game event handler. And that's really about it. Yeah, that's really about it. So it's not exactly as complicated as people might think. It's just a little bit awkward in certain areas if you want to make the whole thing integratable on any system. So all you need now are the files from here. So you don't need the top line. Okay, wherever you're going to get that from, you're going to get it from. But just feed it through um, the game event handler when you inherit the I application. Just feed in your data from your polling of the operating system for your keyboard or your mouse. Just feed it in. It doesn't have to be SCL2. It can be anything you like. Uh, just feed it through them, the um, files that you simply do and you will gain a system like that where you can just write out your event handler it doesn't have to be in main it can be in a separate file again that can be placed in any file um, and then just keep track of the variables and then when you are updating your scene that's at the end updating your scene here um just remember to update your variables and then use your variables to move the object or whatever you're doing if it's input. Uh to add Z to this is obvious really. Um let's see if we can. Off the cuff. This isn't scripted, this is just me messing around. So I could now do, uh, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> into and out of screen. <laughs> what would you call into and out of screen? Uh, magnification? Probably. input control so this is how it's done okay we'll call it magnification okay semicolon uh, here I'll just split that off now right, that's what I've just added here I can just take two of these Um, I will use Q and E. I don't know. Um, R and C. Mm, e and C. Yeah, I've heard E and C before. So E. magnification and that's going to be into the screen hey we've got a uh, Mac hexadecimal one Shogun hello to C++ yes this is uh, me doing some C++ it started on uh, Wednesday so the previous episode and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going through and explaining a keyboard, keyboard input system that isn't reliant on any kind of system, basically. Uh, I'm just testing now whether it can or not work just randomly with me typing things in. Uh, C, E, C. So yeah, it's a full keyboard system. If you go through the whole videos, I'll show you how to do that in a second. 
so that's that. So basically what I've done is I've just input control uh, magnification. I've added the controls to the keys E and C. If we go down now to the usage, um, silly me, I'm going to need a Z pos now, aren't I? Uh, we'll start that at 3. Now we set 10, didn't we? Uh, is that a good place? No, it isn't. This is a translation. Alright, that's better. Um, so here, I mean it's pretty obvious what is coming up here. It's literally just copy and pasting. So the Z position is going to be 10 times frame time times magnification. There we go. Uh, get amount. Alrighty. So now we've got that in, we can now add our last argument here. Z pause into and out of the screen, and that should do nicely. Uh, build. Did I make a mess of myself? Oh, looks like we're building. Okay, uh, Kubuntu and C sharp. Really? Um, I can do C sharp if you want. I'm in C plus plus at the moment. <laughs> if it looks like C sharp, I do. Um, f forgive me. <laughs> So let's have a look and see what's going on now when we try and do a full build. There's me bug thingy. Right, let's debug. It'll work slowly, but I don't care. Right, there's me monkey head. Um, so up, down, left, right, E into the screen. Woo! And C, oh, goes down. So that didn't work. Oh, it did. Did it? Oh, my perspective might be uh, slightly out there. Alrighty. Uh, Gareth Hubble, hi all! <laughs> Hello to you, Gareth. Shout out. Uh, Mac, hexadecimal one, Shogun. F load C sharp desktop. Um, not don't know what you mean. Sorry, you lost me on that one. I don't do much C sharp. I've got a C sharp folder. Um, it's got Twitchy on it. Uh, oh, it's got some notes. I can show you, show you some C sharp if you want me to. Don't really have uh, anything planned. If you want me to do some C sharp, I'll do some C sharp. <laughs> I don't care what programming language I use. Uh, let's see, Z coming back, positive. Or negative in this case. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's do magnification there. There we go. And um, now we can run it. There we go. You're liking the look of a C folder and ASM folder. <laughs> so we have up, down, left, right. Uh, e goes in. Ooh, C comes back out again. Ooh, big, bit of a close up there of a monkey head. Uh, you can see the badly formed texture on the back. You can see where it's joined it all up. Um, which is not very good. The reason why we're looking at the back of the head, by the way, and not the front of the head, is actually quite interesting. Uh, I didn't realise it until I looked at this code and thought, oh god, what have they done? Uh, <laughs> what they've done when they set it up, or when they've written it, is they've turned the camera around. Um, so the perspective matrix, it's turned around. So when we set the in the 
instance up of the monkey head here. This is the monkey head. I've only got one going at the moment. I'm not doing ten at once, God. Um, I'm in a virtual machine, if you're interested. <laughs> um, so I'm not doing more than one. Have a look at this. When they set it up, it's positive on the Z. That tells me that the camera's been turned around. The fact that we're looking at the back of the head proves it. So if I, if you don't know, OpenGL starts with the camera looking into the screen, and the screen, when you look into it, is into the minus direction. So that should have been minus 10, and they should not have turned the camera around. But they have done. Don't mind. Don't care. But that's, that's what was given, so that's what I'm using. Um, simple. It's a simple little thing. I haven't altered any of this. Oh, yes, I have. Eek! Just realised I've put a load of gobbledygook in here, haven't I? Uh, let's put, take the gobbledygook out. That's mine. May as well give them this back improved. Alright, so that's improved now. They've now got their keyboard. They can have that back. So, I've uh, added a, key a keyboard to it. And my development is now shining. So, keyboard finished. Keyboard. Control. Integration. Inti. Inter. Integration. Uh, complete. Uh, with. Uh, and. Arrow keys. Also, uh, Z pause on E and C. Have fun. I don't know who that's going to, but they can have fun with it. Uh, Alt, Enter, Wallop. Nothing happened. Click the tick. Everything happens. Whoever's receiving this, there's your code. Oops. Actions will pull and push commits from... Oh, really? Go ahead, it's theirs. It's theirs now. They can have it back. Right, I've done that for them. Uh, I can close this now, can I? Ding, 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 ding. Right, so... <coughs> uh, what have we got on screen now? We've got people chatting. So, folder C-sharp desktop. Oh right, yeah. Uh, I'm look at now. I understand what you were saying. You were lo you're looking at my desktop here. Uh, C and C A and ASM. I haven't quite worked out ASM. I have to admit it. ASM is worrying me. It's not doing exactly what I think it's doing. So it's blank. There's nothing in there yet. Um, C sharp. I can do a little bit of. Uh, C, I think, is blank at the moment. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's blank. Uh, not really started on that. So ASM should really have a folder in. Uh, for you guys. There we go. That's for you guys. If you want me to do anything. Uh, I haven't got one for C++ here. So that was somebody else's folder. Uh, I'll put ours in, so we can do things for us. Um, don't need the backup anymore. I was messing about with it, and I didn't want to break the original code. Um, so, move to waste bin. That's okay, we can get rid of that now. Uh, empty. Uh, I can go Linux, or... Uh, Windows, it's your choice. <laughs> uh, you can ask for anything you want, really. Uh, what would you prefer to see? I've just finished input. I was going to do ECS next if you wanted it. Um, I've got that set up. I think. Let's look at my notes. Oh, I haven't done the script for a video yet. Uh, yes, I have. I've got ECS. I can describe that for you if you wish. That's on this menu. 
I mean, this is just an, an event handler. Uh, once you get past the defines and making a game event handler, controls and stores things um, for import, you can actually grow this system to um, do all operating system events of any kind. I mean, there's no reason why it can't. There's nothing in the rules that say you can. It's restricted in any way. So that's why I did it in C plus um, plus. Plus, somebody gave me a bunch of C plus plus to do it with. So there you go. I got something free. Ah, uh, right. So that's a file save. Uh, let's go to the next one then. So is anybody up for a bit of ECS? You can, I may as well introduce it now. Uh, I, I've got three minutes left. So, uh, and then we're into questions. So is there anything in particular that, that you would like to see? Um, I mean, uh, my next subject was going to be ECS. Uh, entity component uh, system. Okay, that was going to be my next uh, chat for next week, really. I mean, it's Friday today, isn't it? So, um, tomorrow I am doing the beginners beginners courses uh, how to program I program everything as it should be programmed using tests and I am trying to <laughs> jokingly um, test driven develop a working 3d engine for programming um, on the Monday to Friday slots, I do Monday, Wednesday and Friday on this slot, which is um, just Programming Club, I think we've now called it, yes it's changed, the Programming Club, uh, where I'll, I'll cover any topic, I'll use any language um, that you want, really. C, Entity System in C, is that possible? Can't see why not, is it? I can program it in C and C++ at the same time. C++ accepts C, doesn't it? Yeah, I could do it that way, instead of just pure C. If you want it done in pure C, then can you give me a 3D graphics engine in pure C and I'll do it for you. I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, no real point in doing an ECS system if you're... Well, you can do it on 2D, I suppose. Give me a, C, a, a C2D graphics engine instead, then. I'll let you off. Uh, or a 1D graphics system. <laughs> Is this such a thing? I'm going to put a point on the, the screen. Everything's going to be at that point. Yeah, I could in, imagine that one. That'd be funny. <laughs> God, I'm stupid. Um... Well, let's see what else can we do. Hmm. It can be done in C Sharp, I suppose, but I don't have anything set up. Have I got something set up for C Sharp? No, I've only got server. Uh, I don't have the base C, C Sharp code, which is a bit of a nuisance. I mean, I could write the ECS code but I couldn't write it on top of anything hmm that would be interesting um, what I'm going to do then is I will um, put together a platform a 3D platform I'll probably do it in C++ because I've got enough 3D platforms lying around uh, let's have a look what do we got? Uh, yeah. It's got full rendering in it. 
just got a patch renderer. Text and colour. Yeah, we've got enough in stuff in here. So I've got rendering. SDL2 or GLFW. Uh, or SFML now. Well, I've got this version now in an SFML uh, format. Um, okay. Where's the maths? No maths. Okay, I'll find a maths library. I think we've got an easy one to use. Actually, I could just use the one I've got on uh, Linux there. I might carry on with that one. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll get that uh, sorted out. Uh, will I be doing C? Will I be doing ASM? Probably. C sharp, definitely. Um, I'm just on the edge of getting something set up for C sharp, I think. I'm not sure what I want to use because I was looking into different things with C sharp. Uh, what have I just done with my Manjaro? Um, Let's have a look. Alright, so C sharp or F sharp applications I can do with this. Uh, .NET's new restore and run, okay. Don't know how those work, but we might be able to find out. Uh, let's have a look, F12. Let's get this up so we can see it. Uh, dot net uh, help. It takes it a while, doesn't it? Create a new dot net project or file. How does it know? <laughs> Is there a man? Have I downloaded one? No manual. Nice. So show command line, yeah. Info. All right. Um, yeah, that's dead useful. Uh, new folder. Uh, test. Uh, why not? Delete me. Whatever. Uh, let's have a look at this. And all I need is a control on them. Okay, let's pop this up. Um, pop you up. Thank you. So, rin test. Uh, dot net new. Um, I'm just going to put in test. Okay. Unable to determine the desired template from the input template name test. The following templates partially match the input. Be more specific with the template name. What? Right. Ah, it's bad name. Uh, console, and uh, we'll give it name numbers. What do we get for that one? <laughs> Nothing. 
All oh, right. What is this thing's on drugs? Console. Whoa, we got something. <laughs> we got a CS project file. Whoa, hey. Uh, dot net restore, just in case I've messed anything up, up, up on that. Thank you. And there we go, we've got a dot net file. Uh, the other one is dot net run, right, okay. Uh, all right then. Some projects have trouble loading. Please review the output for more details. MS Build Project Manager failed. <laughs> oh, you little blesser. <laughs> there you go. Hello world. It works. Now, that is totally useless. But, yeah, that's right. That's exactly what it's like. Problem with this programming language is the way it works. Um, it's rather interesting uh, programming language because, for instance, if I was to put in void, um, let's call it uh, numbers. Um, what we're going to be putting in here is uh, for works in every language int i equals zero uh, i is less than five i plus plus right anybody know how to print in uh, C sharp system mm, output. I'm guessing where is the output system? System output out of memory doesn't that work? No, that won't work. Um, we can try it. Ah, wait a minute. Have I missed out console here? Yeah. I've got an out. Can I use that one? Will that work? Great, it's building. Uh, so numbers. This is where my problems start. It's not the language itself. Well, yeah, it is the language itself. It's, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even know how to uh, print out properly. Uh, does not exist in the type console, and yet it tells me it did. All right. Uh, is there an output system then? No. What does exist in console then? Hmm. Read. C. 
set. Set out. What on earth? Ah, oh, right. Right line. It's a function. What does it take? Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. I've never tried this before, by the way. An object reference is required for the non-static field method. This is it. Alright, so this is a static void and this is a void. And this is quite strange. We get the error that I was after. Right. An error like this, an object reference is required for the non-static field. So it is mm, mm, an object. Which object shall we pick? Namespace, test, class, program, a static void, main. We haven't got any object. Well, we have. We have this. Will it count that as an object or not? Let's have a look. Is not a valid in a static property. This is what I was expecting there. Oh god, I do hate this. Uh, what it's asking me to do is that. That's really what it's asking me to do. There you go. We can now program in C-sharp. And that's what I don't like. Because what's that just done? It's transferred the object. The object has that the this has now been transferred into here. So even though we haven't got anything in the bracket, there is something in that bracket. And it's an object. And we can't see it. And I know it's there because it's told me. Now if I hadn't got that error, I would never have worked this out. Because I wouldn't have any clue about why was it giving me errors on static voids and voids. It wouldn't make any sense to me. Um, as it, and that should be public, never mind, okay, so this, they've finished off, they don't do public anymore, alright, um, this becomes awkward to me when I'm trying to write programs, because I'm used to writing things that mean what they say, whereas in C sharp you don't, you write things and hope that the system interprets them in the way that you meant it to happen. It's the same thing with uh, Java. Well, yeah, Java. Uh, it's the same language, basically. And, uh, hmm. Different. I'll leave that as an example. Hmm. No, I won't, because I don't like it. <laughs> I am terrible, Anna. There we go. That's testing out C sharp. Yes, it works. I want to keep that. It's rubbish. I don't have a test for ASM yet. So that could be Monday. So Monday is either ECS or uh, let's have a look at the other folders and start creating um, systems that we can use for writing other programs. Um, yeah, that could be interesting. 
I did want to finish that ECS thing off though, so I might do that first and then do these other folders. Hmm, okay. We'll find out on Monday, I guess. In the meantime, if there's no other questions, I would like to bid you all a good weekend. I will be here tomorrow with the Beginners Club, doing beginner stuff, writing beginner-style code. I think I'm using Java for that. Uh, Sunday, we will be uh, in naval action. Great game. Relaxing, chilling out. I'm a pirate, and I'm just sailing around the Caribbean getting a suntan. So we'll see how that goes. Um, in the meantime, take care. Keep programming. And have fun.